Welcome to the University of Rhode Island State of the University Address. Please welcome to the stage the 12th President of the University of Rhode Island, Mark Parlange. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here today and welcome to the State of the University Address. I would like to start the program with our land acknowledgement. It's developed with our friends and our neighbors from the Narragansett tribe and in honor of the people who lived on and stewarded the land where URI now resides. So the University of Rhode Island occupies the traditional stomping ground of the Narragansett nation and the Niantic people. We honor and respect the enduring and continuing relationship between the indigenous people in this land by teaching and learning more about their history and present day communities and by becoming stewards of the land we too inhabit. I should just say the stomping ground was where the dance was done and that was the land and that was really important to the Narragansett tribe that that uh, word be used. Look, um, as I shared in the message to our community this morning, we stand in support of those in our URI family who are affected by the horrific attacks in Israel. Mary and I, along with so many of you, are keeping in our thoughts all of the people and families who have been impacted by this violence. URI Hillel will hold a gathering on Wednesday at 4 p.m. for members of our community to come together, and the Counseling Center and other resources remain available for members of our community. And now, as we begin today's event, I want to welcome members of the university's Board of Trustees, including our chair, Margot Cook, who are joining us today. And all of you gathered today here in Edwards Hall and everyone watching online. I know some of you are Texas Rangers fans and you've had to go to that game, which is also happening, but go Orioles. Okay, <laughs> the past year has been one of great momentum for the University of Rhode Island. On June 16th, Governor Dan McKee signed the state's 14 billion 2024 fiscal year budget, and URI received 105.4 million for our operating expenses, and 65.8 million for renovation and renewal of several of our outdated athletic facilities. This is important for two reasons. First, it represents an increased investment in URI from the state of 14.1 million over the previous year. This is a big deal. And second, after 50 years of declining support from the state, a disinvestment that landed URI at the very bottom of our New England peers and in the lowest quarter of our national peers in terms of financial support from the state, I am really proud to say that we are starting to turn the corner. We have shifted our course and we are on a new path. A 16% increase and operating support after five decades of decline is huge. And we did this together. I want to say thank you to the governor, the speaker of the house, the Senate president, and the general assembly who came to our campuses, who heard from our students and faculty about the important work being done here, and who believe in the potential of the state's flagship research university. Thanks to the students, staff, and faculty who represented URI at our day at the State House and elsewhere this year, from talent development scholars and student athletes to students and faculty from every one of our colleges and schools. You are powerful URI storytellers. Thanks to our alumni, community, and board of trustees who called local representatives, who tweeted, or whatever it is that we call it these days, <laughs> who advocated for URI in every corner of the state. And thanks to donors, friends, and affiliates of the university who gave generously of their time and resources to power the people and programs that are having a real impact on our state and beyond. Investment in URI is critical. It's what fuels our university. Investment from the state and investment from philanthropy. A huge thank you to all of you who made Day of Giving 
the most successful in history, raising over $2 million, surpassing our $1.5 million goal. I have to say, uh, the dean of the College of Business, Sean Rogers, was quite spectacular with the dunk tank, and he was very happy to tell me that they had the most donors. So next year, we should all be doing the dunk tank. But anyway, investment from our students and their families in their education and their future, investment by our faculty in teaching, research, and advancing the boundaries of their fields in scholarly work, and investment from our staff in the critical work that powers our university. Investment in URI is an investment in our future and in the belief that we can and will affect positive social, economic, cultural, and environmental change for our state and for the world. With renewed investment and sustained support from the state, we are on our way to achieving the ambitious goals we set for ourselves in our strategic plan. Launched in the spring, Focus URI highlights our commitments to four strategic priorities over the next 10 years. The first priority is to broaden our impact. URI will be a national model for how a flagship public research university can drive change for the betterment of its state and the global human condition. As I visit, speak with, and hear from people across our campuses, I am so impressed by the many ways our faculty and students are raising our research enterprise at every level. Faculty like Dan Roxbury, who's leading research on biomedical and nanotechnology, and Reiner Lohman, whose work studying the forever chemicals called PFAS is informing policy around health and the manufacturing of everyday items that we use and consume. Faculty members like Patrick Bohr, whose work in organic food safety has been supported with millions in USDA awards, and Katerina Quinlan from the Ryan Institute, who's conducting groundbreaking research on potential therapies for spastic cerebral palsy. This past year, URI's broad research endeavors brought in $156.8 million in funding. This is a 24% increase over the previous year. URI's research and scholarship is changing lives. We are becoming a destination for companies and organizations who want to work with us. Our College of Arts and Sciences is home to experts in quantum computing, which has generated millions of dollars in NSF awards and strengthened industry partnerships. Our College of Engineering houses the National Institute for Undersea Vehicle Technologies, a major partnership with our neighbors at the University of Connecticut and the Naval Undersea Warfare Center. Our Graduate School of Oceanography runs the NOAA Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. I should say we're good friends with our uh, colleagues at UConn and somehow though they never want to play us in basketball so I'll just leave it there but uh, I'm hoping that we will play one day. I want to also mention Imbre. It's the Rhode Island Idea Network of Biomedical Research Excellence. It's a statewide consortium housed at URI that supports and develops talented individuals committed to research in cancer, environmental health sciences, and neuroscience. There are many ways that members of the URI community are helping us fulfill our mission as a land and sea grant university. The URI-led Watershed Watch project enlists over 400 volunteers to test our state's waterways. The data they collect are helping to inform decision-making that will impact the health of all Rhode Islanders. In our Community First Responder Program, led by Anita Jacobson from the College of Pharmacy, has mobilized student volunteers to distribute thousands of naloxone kits over the last three years while educating the community on how to reverse opioid overdoses. URI is literally saving lives. Our, our second strategic priority is enhancing student achievement. We are committed to creating a community where every student can thrive, where their academic journeys include outstanding courses, academic support when they need it, and access to hands-on learning experiences, research,
that will help them succeed. One of a kind experiences that you can get at URI, like the International Engineering Program, a national model that combines engineering with world languages and global internships to equip students with the skills needed to collaborate with and lead international teams. I think of our College of Business RAM Fund. It's a student-managed investment fund where participants engage in real-life portfolio management. Students act as research analysts obtaining long-term competitive rates of return for investors and giving them valuable experience for careers in finance and management. In our Energy Fellows program, students who are passionate about sustainable energy are mentored by top energy companies and organizations, giving them real-world experience and a competitive advantage as they prepare for their careers in the clean energy sector. And we have the Juvenile Social and Legal Justice course in the College of Arts and Sciences that combines criminology, criminal justice, psychology, and political science, giving students the opportunity to engage with caseworkers and teachers and visit with family court judges. We are ensuring that a URI education is accessible to all. More than 90% of our students receive some sort of financial assistance, and more than 30% of incoming URI students are first in their family to attend college. And finally, we are stepping up to support our club and varsity student athletes in a big way by investing in championship caliber people and facilities. With the state's recent investment, we can make desperately needed improvements to our athletics complex. We will renovate Mead Stadium, home of course to our football team, which just beat Brown this weekend to re retain the Governor's Cup trophy. It's also going to be the home of our women's lacrosse team. We will build a track for our teams who have not been able to train or compete at home for more than 35 years. Our men's cross country team just won the New England Championship for the first time since 1952. We'll improve Tutel Pool and we'll make important enhancements to facilities for our baseball, softball, and soccer teams that will enhance the experiences of our student athletes and fans. We just completed the Solo Vive practice facility for our men's and women's basketball teams who are stronger than ever. Our women were 8-10 regular season co-champions this past year. Our entire community thrives when our students succeed. Our third priority is fostering an inclusive culture. I have often said that a university is all about people and culture. We are a vibrant, integrated university that celebrates people with a culture of excellence and giving back. And we are continuing to develop places and programs that cultivate a sense of belonging. Through the work of our Gender and Sexuality Center, our Women's Center, our Center for Military and Veteran Education, and our Multicultural Student Services Center, we are ensuring that every single member of our community feels safe, supported, included, and ready to succeed. Two years ago, I was warmly welcomed by our URI community, and it is this same spirit that all our centers work to create a feeling of home for our students. We are committed to ensuring that the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion are fundamental to our policies, programs, collaborations, and conversations. We are striving to create a campus that does not just meet the standards for accessibility, but, a, but that is truly welcoming and accommodating to those with disabilities. With Student Affairs, our Office of Disability, Access, and Inclusion, and members of our community, we are working across our campuses to ensure that these needs are heard and prioritized. And we are celebrating faculty and staff by fostering a culture of excellence, recognizing achievement, and rewarding outstanding performance. The pandemic fundamentally changed the ways we live, work, and communicate. And now more than ever, we are focusing on ways to come together, 
build community, and support physical and mental health and well-being. And finally, we are powering the university of the future. We are modernizing our financial practices with a focus on generating new revenue that will be reinvested in our teaching, research, and service missions in ways that broaden our reach and intensify our impact. We launched a special investment initiative that provides Kickstarter funding to innovative programs. The initiative is designed to inspire entrepreneurial thought around how we can collaborate more effectively and enhance our academic research and administrative work. To date, the university has invested $3 million to support 28 unique projects for a more wide range of our colleges and administrative areas, which have the potential to increase new enrollment, help the university strategically redeploy financial aid, and achieve operational efficiencies and reduce our energy costs. We are prioritizing the environment and advancing sustainability efforts and environmental responsibility across the university. We will focus on significantly reducing single-use plastic water bottles at our events and other initiatives to come as we update our long-term campus sustainability strategy. Our campus is beautiful, and I often hear from alumni that it has changed so much for the better over the years. Thank you to our dedicated facilities and ground staff who make this happen. But they will also be the first to tell you that there is much needed deferred infrastructure work to do. And finally, we are investing in and implementing administrative and financial practices that position us for long-term success, practices that are high-performing, fiscally sound, and agile. We have considerable momentum at URI, and we have so much to celebrate across our university. But there are changes we must make together. Our ability to broaden our impact and expand our reach, enhance student achievement and outcomes, and fully deliver on our potential as Rhode Island's flagship university is limited by our current budget model. This is why we are embarking on a multi-year effort to design and implement a new budget model called the Incentive-Based Budget Model, which will put us on a path for long-term financial sustainability, diversify our revenue streams, incentivize and reward operational efficiencies, and align our resources with decision-making authority. When we work together, a successful IBB model will lift the entire university. In fact, it is a model that similarly powers many of our higher education peers, both public and private. This new model will empower colleges and departments to set and achieve priorities, provide greater transparency in the budget process, incentivize revenue generating opportunities that drive innovation, and achieve cost efficiencies. We will encourage more research collaboration and support the strategic initiatives of our focus URI plan. Designing and implementing the new model will require input from our entire community, and we have invited participation from all corners of our university. To ensure broad stakeholder engagement, we have appointed a steering committee and a design committee. Over the next several months, they will meet regularly and will engage in conversations with colleagues across the university. I encourage you to share your thoughts and questions with them. We are Rhode Island's university, and our time is now to invest in new programming and initiatives, build on our strengths in fundraising and philanthropy, develop and support efforts that enhance our research enterprise, and foster opportunities for growth in all areas of the university. We have set ambitious goals and it will require our collective effort to reach them. We have great momentum at URI and our time is now. So I ask you, colleagues, students, community members, Rams, do you believe? Do you believe that URI can and will be a force for good? 
an agent of change in this state, a driver of transformation and excellence in everything we do. Because I believe, I believe that URI is coming and we will thrive. I believe we can do this and so do others. We now rank among the top 35% of all US public universities. Our undergraduate nursing program is in the top 10% of all programs. And our undergraduate business program is in the top 25%. The impact and the value of public flagship universities like ours cannot be overstated. Public universities are at the very core of every productive society, offering students affordable and accessible education. But without investment, public institutions like URI risk losing their ability to deliver on their vital education research and service missions. URI has historically been a gateway for Rhode Islanders of all backgrounds. We have provided opportunities for students to pursue their dreams, make connections, and have a real impact on their communities. Public universities like ours have often served as incubators of innovation and research, fueling economic growth and societal change. Public universities like URI have historically been more than just educational institutions. We are a meeting place, a convener, and a pillar of our community. URI contributes to the local economy. We have robust extension programs, and we engage in community initiatives. As I said earlier, we are grateful to the governor and our elected officials who have invested in our vision to be a leading global research university that drives positive social, cultural, economic, and environmental change by contributing and instilling new knowledge to address the world's greatest challenges. But fully achieving this vision requires all of us. We can be part of something great here. So I ask you to join me. Be an advocate. Tell your URI st story wherever you go and engage with policymakers in your community. You are our greatest ambassadors and Rhodey pride runs deep. Let's continue to share it. Commit to inclusivity. Create spaces where all voices come to the table and recognize that diverse perspectives unite us, not divide us. An inclusive environment makes us stronger and more adaptable. Think bigger. Our motto says, think big. But I ask you to think bigger. Think globally. Engage with international community members. Seek out opportunities to partner. And recognize that we must be connected to be successful in all that we do. Innovate and collaborate. Work with your friends and mentors in classrooms, labs, and in research. Foster curiosity, creativity, and critical thinking. Finally, lead by example. Embody our values as a university. Act with integrity. Be generous. Hold yourselves and each other accountable and understand that true leadership is marked by the success of others and not ourselves. This year, has already been highlighted with moments of excitement and success. We kicked off a new academic year together. We were on the quad together last week for Rhodey Fest. We launched Hispanic Heritage Month with performance art. We will host a guitar festival later this month. We toasted to 75 years of the College of Arts and Sciences. And this week, we will celebrate homecoming. We have achieved so much. And we have so many exciting opportunities on the horizon. And when I think about our future, I really think about our students. We recently brought together a group of students to talk about why they selected URI, what URI means to them, and the people at URI who have made a difference in their lives. And so I'm excited for you to hear their stories and their own words now. They talked together for over an hour and this video provides just a brief window into their inspiring stories.
three words I would use to describe you and I would be genuine, unity, and family. Dedicated, enriching, and special. Powerful, genuine, and opportunistic. Warm, but not the weather. <laughs> so a few words that I would describe you are right is authentic, creative, and generous. For me, I came in through a time development program, so for those who don't know, it's a special admission program uh, for Rhode Island residents uh, from underrepresented populations, and currently still, um, TV has been very supportive in every way possible. I'm from Rhode Island. For me, URI was a no-brainer. I mean, it just had everything I think a school, you could look more in a school. It's a great location beautiful school, beautiful buildings. I'm also part of the pharmacy program, so I was like, it's one of the best in the nation. I'm also a member of the women's track and field team. So I really just checked off almost every single box for me. I'm here for the grad program um, because there are very few ocean engineering programs in the US. So URI is one of the top ones. So I came here for ocean engineering. I think seeing the passion, seeing the spirit that people had even during COVID and seeing how passionate people were doing research, not only students, but also the faculty really made me want to come here because people just love what they do. I felt really at home at first. Being away from home, you know, two, two and a half hours is, you know, a lot for me. I remember coming back from my welcome day and just seeing all the faculty and most of the students that I met in February coming back in, I think it was like June, just to see them all kind of remember me by name and just be so happy to see me again. I just felt so at home and like I really belonged here. As soon as you step on campus, you can see the energy in the school spirit. Students are very passionate, whether they're doing research projects, whether they're starting a small business of their own or creating an initiative on campus, you can really see that passion shine through right on campus. I actually toured schools during COVID. I don't know if anybody here remembers, but those like Zoom calls um, <laughs> to tour colleges. And URI really was the only place that I felt like could really be a home for me. It's a place where I felt seen even through a computer screen. And I know that that's kind of hard to imagine, especially for people you know who kind of missed that COVID area. but a place where people cared about me and like they were kind of saying that home feeling, that passion feeling. You know, this place is like, uh, it gives you a hug. If you want to put your energy in this place, it gives you that energy out. And man, like, what a wonderful thing. Definitely my parents went here, my uncle went here, my great-grandfather went here. It's definitely a family thing yeah. for me. And it's <laughs> definitely very special that I can have that and it makes me feel more happy. I'm an international student. I'm all the way from North Africa. I'm from Egypt. In my mind, I went. I was really interested in pharmacy. I went to apply for a lot of pharmacy programs. And you're right. I knew that it was one of the top in the nation. But at the beginning, I didn't apply for it because I thought that Rhode Island was an actual like island. I didn't think it was part of the US. <laughs> and then after that, when I knew that it was an actual part of the U.S., I wanted to study in the U.S. I think you can't talk about the dining hall without talking about the dining hall staff. Um, they are absolutely outstanding, to say the least. The guy with the chef hat, Donald yes. 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 that makes the omelets, looks yes. them up. Yes. Yes. He knows my order. He knows everyone's order. Exactly, exactly. And there's a lot of students, 15,000 undergrad students, and he knows their omelet orders, which is very special. A special group of people like to like, who like I look up to would be my teammates um, coming into like a new year as a freshman, it's very nerve-wracking. It's a very welcoming environment, and I have so much fun at track, and I look forward to going there every day. Keith Rinaldi runs the animation studios within the library, so the launch lab, the maker space, having that launch lab, that space for student entrepreneurs to really excel with their businesses. He's doing an excellent job unleashing the potential for students, unlocking that creativity with students right here on campus too. For me, it was Allison Jackson Frazier from the Center for Leadership Development. She has helped me open so many doors, find new opportunities, more leadership positions, ways to improve myself. So there's a few for me. Melissa Boyd Colvin, Melissa Campbell Kelsey, and Alison Jackson Frazier. They've I've known them since my first year here. And another one has been huge is Dr. Ellen Reynolds, who's the Vice President for Student Affairs. I was her undergraduate intern last semester and then into the summer. And she's just been so, so supportive. Being able to have that staff person there and knowing you have that support. Um, and at first hand, and knowing that there, someone is there to have your back is really important. Also the graduate students on staff, I know Julia's here. The college student personnel program, 
Um, I've had a lot of connections with people there through different organizations and stuff like that where they've been staff level support for us. Like honestly, like Juju, if you weren't in this room, I would probably say your name. I don't know, like you are someone when you walk in the room, it just smiles. Captain John Khmer from the Afghan Studies Department, she's the chair. Oh my god, absolutely amazing. She, I talk about her on tour, every single tour. Um, she, I've only known her for about a year and a half and she has already made an, a huge impact on me. She was actually my first um, person of color that I've met as an educator. So that is already really, really powerful, especially in my academic career. The athletic director, Thor Bjorn, he's just like a ball of energy. He is always so excited to see everybody in like Maple Fieldhouse, Keeney, but just the whole that area of campus. Um, I would say Mr. Beauty for sure. Um, as soon as I like did my interview here, um, I, he just made me feel really at home just because I was so nervous. You know, coming here, coming to a new school, meeting a bunch of staff members, and meeting a bunch of students, he really put me at ease. I just still feel like a little kid, like talking to an adult is like scary and he just like feels almost like a family member at this point. All my professors support me so much, every like faculty member I've met, all the other students support me so much with everything that I do. And I really think that President Pavanj and his whole team are the people that I really look up to. They're extremely passionate about what they do, which I really, really love. And that's how I want to be in the future, really passionate about what, what I'm doing, really passionate about the impact that I'm trying to achieve. It's my first time meeting all of you. Just like still blown away learning about all these opportunities. And there's really something for everybody. And I just like, I love hearing everybody's experiences because like, they're all so different, but I feel like we really just unite over just our passion for the school and how like, supportive and thankful we are that we're all here together. So as you can see, we have wonderful students. I, I don't know if, uh, well, let's, let's wait to the end and then I'll ask you to stand when we have the lights on for everyone to see. So it'd be good to see you, but thank you all for, for doing that. URI is really having a significant impact on the lives of our students who's, who draw inspiration from each other, from our faculty, from our coaches, from this community. And our students are having a remarkable impact in turn on URI. And I am so impressed and so inspired by our students. They are remarkable. As I shared earlier, the work on our campuses is truly extraordinary with broad implications that reach far beyond our corner of the world. And I'd like to take the time now to highlight just some of the people who are making an impact here in our state and across the globe. Obviously, I, I could not possibly share all the incredible stories we have to tell, but I hope you will be, as I am, inspired and proud of these members of our community. The first is pharmacy professor Menon. Nearly 30% of the cases of liver cancer, the fastest growing cause of cancer-related deaths in the world, have been attributed to chronic alcohol liver disease. And with support from National Institutes of Health and the Biden Cancer Moonshot Program, Professor Menon is using nanotechnology to develop cancer solutions. As we move through peak hurricane season, I am grateful for URI oceanographer Isaac Guinness, who with a team of colleagues and students is developing a modeling system to help keep Rhode Island officials ahead of strong storms. The system allows officials to make real-time decisions that will save property and lives. Michelle Fonts and Bobby Brito have been named to Rhode Island Foundation's Equity Leadership Initiative. Their inclusion in the program signifies their commitment and leadership to advancing important community equity and diversity work and will have real impacts on our efforts to build a truly inclusive campus environment. Three members of our club rowing team, Andrew Snow, Billy Bork, and Joseph Connors, represented the university on the world stage this summer. All three were selected to the U.S. rowing team that competed in the World University Games in China. It is a fantastic representation of our university and more specifically of all our great sports clubs, programs, and students. Provost Barb Wolf 
and URI Research Foundation Executive Director Christian Cowan were named recipients of the Leaders and Achievers Award by the Providence Business News. Their inclusion on this list, along with several proud URI alums, is yet another illustration of our commitment to advancing our state and improving life for all Rhode Islanders. Our URI Shark Camp is truly an inspiring program, and it's not just me who says so. The program has garnered national attention and is making a real difference for young students right here in Rhode Island. Developed by Professor of Biological Sciences, Brad Weatherby, the program introduces high school students from underserved communities in Rhode Island to the biological sciences and marine sciences through hands-on learning opportunities like tagging sharks. Assistant Professor Brendan Skip Mark is co-director and a principal investigator on the world's largest human rights data set, which is housed right here at URI. This is work that is truly making a difference at a global level, which was recognized by an invitation for Dr. Mark to attend the Geneva Human Rights Platform, a UN expert roundtable last month. Professor Laura Meyerson is part of a worldwide scientific group on biodiversity that in a, in, in a landmark study highlighted evidence of the global spread and destruction caused by invasive species, resulting in an estimated 423 billion in damages to nature, food, human health annually. Their report will make a major contribution to filling critical knowledge gaps and supporting decision and policy makers. As an information aide at URI's Higgins Welcome Center, Werner Lafreniere has welcomed tens of thousands of visitors to URI. You all know her. She has inspired students and colleagues along the way. Her story, one of relentless determination and optimism, garnered statewide attention. Medieval scholar Joel Rolo Coster went viral this summer thanks to a TED-Ed video on the papacy that garnered over half a million views in just three weeks. The cleverly animated video called Pope versus Pope versus Pope was a history lesson on events that saw three popes claim the role of supreme spiritual authority for Catholics worldwide. Professor Jamie Ross's new study on the widespread infiltration of microplastics reveal the potential for serious health consequences, including Alzheimer's. And then in a separate, first-of-its-kind study, URI researchers Victoria Fulfer and J.P. Walsh found that the floor of our Narragansett Bay contains more than 1,000 tons of microplastics. Their collective work is making significant contributions to the understanding of the impacts of microplastics on our health and the environment. And it is positioning URI at the forefront of efforts to address microplastic pollution. Cancer is a leading cause of mortality in women and ranks among the top three causes of premature deaths in women under the age of 70 in almost every country. Yet women continue to face disparities in care, according to analysis from The Lancet, one of the world's most prestigious medical journals. College of Nursing professor Erica Lieberman is playing a key role in addressing that disparity in care. New York City is sinking, and it's more than one million buildings may be playing a part. A study led by professors Matt Wei and Stephen DeHaunt and PhD student P. Chen Wu is part of a growing body of research on how waterfront cities are facing not just rising waters, but sinking land. The study provides yet another climate call to action around the need to prepare for rising sea levels and strengthening storms. Rabbi Haas and Colleen Rossignol were co-authors and principal investigators for a U.S. Department of State Ideas Grant that will expand study abroad programs for URI students. URI is the first institution in Rhode Island to receive the Ideas Grant which will help equip our teacher candidates with the knowledge and skills to support our culturally diverse students and families throughout the state of Rhode Island. 
The URI College of Business is celebrating its centennial as a leader in business, research, and outreach in Rhode Island. An example of that leadership is the recent international recognition of our chapter of the Honor Society, Beta Gamma Sigma. It is a truly distinguished group of students who are eligible to join and an example of how we are preparing leaders who are shaping the world of business. So who knew that lasers and iron might help the world treat contaminated water? In a first-of-its-kind study led by Professor Joe Goodwill, Professor Duggan Hayes, and PhD student Kelly and, and Tolley, it explores how light may be used to convert ferrate, a form of iron, to a powerful chemical oxidant capable of treating pollutants. The results lay the early groundwork to develop new water treatment methods with a quarter of the world lacking access to clean water, the research is timely and glo globally significant. In a potentially groundbreaking research study, kinesiology professor Ryan Chapman, inspired by the challenging birth of his own child, is exploring the role of biomechanics during pregnancy and its influence on labor and outcomes. The study has the potential to improve maternal care and reduce the persistently high maternal mortality rates in the United States. And finally, URI is on the move. With some of the best walkers in the state, URI custodians and champion walkers, Derek Carr, Angela O'Donnell, Christine Sindionas, Gwyneth Pugh, and Sean Wynn, record on average between 15,000 and 30,000 steps per day and they have won four of the last five statewide step-up challenges from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Their own efforts to strengthen their physical and mental health serve as an inspiration to all of you. I would like now to invite anyone in our community who was recognized today to please stand so that we may thank and applaud you, including our students who were in the video, for your remarkable work. It's thanks to you, our students, staff, faculty, and friends of URI who make up this incredible community, that our university will continue to be among the best places in the world to live, learn, and work. I want to really warmly thank you all for all that you do. Thank you for being here this afternoon. Now is our time. Go Rhodey. But should the voice of God